Welcome for a pumpkin tutorial. Today we're going to spend some time making Halloween jack-o'-lanterns. I'm just showing you some of the things in my little sketchbook for my draw a pumpkin a day challenge. And here we go. Some things you're going to need. You're going to need some watercolor or mixed media paper, some washi tape, a pen, or a pencil, an eraser, a nice watercolor brush that can get a lot of water and a lot of pigment or, or watercolor paint in it. And you can use a six and eight, whatever size you feel you need, and maybe some sort of a fine liner. And of course you'll need some clean water for clearing off your brush and maybe a palette to mix your colors. I have four watercolor palettes here. These are by Zen Arts Design. Zen Art uh, is a wonderful uh, watercolor paint that I've been using the last five or six months. And it's the only paint that I've been using since I got them. And you're gonna need a, a few colors. You're gonna need a variety of shades of yellow. Lemon yellow, Hansa yellow, light, medium, new gamboge. Uh, you're going to need some oranges, like a viridian uh, or like a pyrrole orange. You're going to need some reds, some browns, maybe a little bit of purple, and it'll all make sense when we get there. And I'm just showing you some of the colors that I have that I've been using. I think I might actually go through all of the names of every single color. You don't need to do that. Um, you can make it as simple or as colorful or complicated as you need. And enjoy some music before we get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with some of the lighter, brighter yellows. And you're just going to put them all over the page. And it doesn't matter where they go. Anywhere is fine. And then I'm putting a little bit darker of a yellow, just so there are variations. These are going to be the colors that make up the uh, flames of the candle inside the pumpkin. So place them all over. Once we get the page covered in a variety of yellow shades, we then have to let it dry. Now you can see the page is dry, and what I'm going to do is use my pencil to draw two eyes for the jack-o'-lantern and a mouth. Try to make them, if you want to make them creepy, make them creepy. If you want to make them friendly, make them friendly. Just draw two eyes and a mouth. The mouth can have an uneven number of teeth. It doesn't have to have teeth. Just be an open smile or grimace or whatever you want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some shades of orange. And we're I'm taking a little bit of a vermilion there. I think it's vermilion and um, an orange. And I'm going to use that color every place that I didn't draw. So it means I'm going to color the whole entire page except for where the eyes and the mouth are. And this will take some time.
Once we have enough orange on the page, we have to sit and let that dry. Now you can see we're dry. So we're taking the pencil and we're gonna draw lines outside of the bright yellow. So it'll show that there's depth that we actually cut into the pumpkin for the eyes. And we're also gonna do it for the mouth. <clears throat> so it'll create a really nice effect. Now I'm gonna draw two round eyes for a new pumpkin up here. And I'm gonna draw a mouth. I'm gonna give this one some vampire looking teeth. And just like before, everything that is not inside of those pencil lines is going to get colored with now some deeper oranges with some browns and some reds. So we're just adding more layers of color. There I'm taking some of that vermilion and I'm adding a little bit of a burnt sienna to it and just a little bit of a, a red. It might have been like a pyrrole red or a scarlet red, just to give it a, a deeper color. And I'm going to put that on the page every place that I didn't draw pencil. And that'll take some time. I'm adding just lots of different shades of those colors mixed. And sometimes I'm just going in with the burnt sienna. Sometimes I'm going in with the orange or a mixture of two or three different shades and just covering the entire page with those colors. Now, once we finish that, we do the exact same thing. We wait for this layer to dry. If you have a heating tool or a hair dryer or a drying tool, you can use that or you can just wait. Now that we're dry and we're back, we do the same thing like we did to the first pumpkin. We draw lines outside of the eyes and outside of the mouth to show depth, to show that we've actually cut into the pumpkin. And now here in the bottom corner, I'm drawing two new eyes and a new mouth. And you can see I kind of messed up the tooth. I put it in the wrong direction. So I erase and you see it doesn't affect the watercolor at all. And I'm going in and I'm fixing it. And what we're gonna use this time is an even deeper, darker color. We're gonna take that original base. Oh, and I'm also drawing circles for the pumpkin just to kind of give it a little bit of shape. And um, so I'm, I'm going in with that same burnt sienna and I'm going in with that um, uh, quinacquinone rose and that cobalt violet hue, which actually I think is a um, quinacquinone violet. And I'm mixing those colors. You can see I've gotten a little bit of the quinacquinone rose and I get the quinacquinone violet to add some depth to the color. And then I'm gonna grab some of that burnt sienna right there. See how it makes it this nice deep warm 
So I end up kind of like um, Indian red or um, Venetian red. And then I add a little bit of purple to it. And then I added some burnt umber to it. There's a little bit more of that quinacridone violet. And now everything outside of the pencil lines, I'm going to use this color on. And it'll take some time. And just like before, fill up the entire page except for in the pencil line, and then we have to let it dry. Okay, now that we've let that dry, we're gonna draw um, like the shape around the last pumpkin and also around the previous pumpkin, just to kind of, you know, so we know just about how big they're going to be and you know, what angle they're going to be at. And we're going to mix an even darker color this time. So we're taking that same base um, but we're going to be adding to it even darker colors. Like I'm going to add a little bit of a, a darker purple and going to add uh, some Payne's gray and some lamp black to it and put a hint of that Indian red color just to kind of give everything a little bit more depth. So we're just trying to add shadows. And you can start and do as and start and stop whenever you want do as many layers as you want we're doing this just to show the the different depth of the the pumpkins and here we're going to put it on everywhere where we did not draw so just keep filling it up
Okay, everything is dry now, and I've decided to pull out some of my uh, fine liners. I've got a Right Tech fine liner that's 04. I have a um, Ohuhu fine liner that's 1.0, and that's what I'm gonna start with. And I'm gonna start with outlining all of the pencil marks to get rid of the pencil racing or, you know, to cover it up and to just give a little bit more depth and clarity. So you can see now how it looks like I've cut into the pumpkin in the eyes and in the mouth here. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace all of those lines on all three pumpkins with that nice dark black marker. Now we're also going around the pumpkins to give them even more shape now that we've traced the eyes and the mouths. And if you wanted to, you could use a dark brush pen for this. If you had some of the um, Rytec of the different colors, if you had like the dark green and the dark brown or their dark black, you could definitely use that. And you can see I'm going around all three of the pumpkins and it just really helps to give it a little bit of clarity. And I pull out the green because I want to put a little stem on the two pumpkins that you can gently see where they might be. And so I decide to pull out my brush pen from the Ohuhu because the other pen is starting to not dry up, but you know, it, it, it's getting filled with the um, watercolor paint. So I need to, you know, rub that off. And now I'm going through the pumpkin and adding some of those curved lines that are so typical that we see on pumpkins. And I'm using the brush pen, the Ohuhu brush pen and it's really looking really nice it's giving it a little bit of more shape so they just don't look like random circles with scary or creepy faces and it looks really 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 nice especially on this one far in the back so here we are we are almost finished just putting a little vine and a leaf on that one pumpkin and look at that. Here's the original I did, and here's the one that you saw me do today. So now here's the fun part. We get to peel the washi tape off. And this takes a little bit of time because yeah, I used, you know, pretty cheap washi. Some of the Sanrio and Peanuts washi is, you know, it's it's not the best. And so it, it sometimes oversticks. So you can see like right there, it, it stuck a little more than it should have. And there's all of the washi tape off. And here is our completed pumpkins that you saw me do today. And you can really see it looks like they're glowing from the inside. And that's the whole purpose of this. I got this idea from a YouTuber and a person on Instagram. And her name is uh, Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I will link them down below and i hope you had a wonderful time and here are just a few photos of different angles showing you the fun pumpkins okay happy halloween enjoy